Uh, are you ready to do your screen share in, in a few seconds? Yes, of course. Being right on your side. You're, you're calling in from Poland, right? Yes, I do. And uh, so uh, your talk is about type safety. And mm -hmm. in the descriptions, you said it goes beyond PEP 48 for uh, the type hints. So um, it will be really interesting to see what uh, you want to do beyond that path. So if you're ready, please, please start. OK, thank you. So uh, what I would like to talk about, let's uh, first uh, uh, define uh, what I mean by type safety and also what I mean by uh, full stack type, sa uh, type safety. So the type safety that we want to achieve is uh, catching uh, all the errors, all, all the bugs uh, that are caused by uh, type mismatches as soon as possible. So ideally it would be during the code development, but uh, never later than in CI. They shouldn't cause any bugs that uh, happen later on the uh, QA phase because this is uh, unnecessary cost, unnecessary time lost in our uh, development cycle when they have to be found in QA and uh, returned to developers. We want automatization here. And also we want to catch typing errors that uh, span layers of stack because uh, uh, we might have errors that uh, are local to uh, some code base, but we also have uh, data that is passed from a layer to a layer and we have uh, contracts between these layers. And also we want some automatic way to find that uh, we are somehow violating this uh, contracts. What are our main problems here? First thing, the uh, system of type annotations in Python is quite new. It is quite immature. Not everybody is using it. It is still uh, in development. So uh, it is not, uh, not yet perfect, of course. The second thing is uh, we have various paradigms of uh, typing in various uh, layers. And this is also a problem how, to, uh, how we can propagate the information about the, uh, about the type from one layer to another. And also the problem is that we, when we test, we usually test layers in a separation. It is much easier to write unit tests than uh, integration tests, and it is much uh, cheaper to run unit tests than integration tests. So we mostly write unit tests, uh, not uh, focusing that much on, uh, on the contracts between various uh, components of our stack. Uh, the one thing I would like to do in the beginning is to uh, somehow discuss the terminology because this terminology is uh, used quite loosely in uh, various publications and uh, sometimes people understand different things by uh, these terms. So I would like to just uh, ensure that we are on the same page so that we re understand the idea of uh, weak versus strong in these terms. If, uh, typing is weak, if, we, if the value can be somehow misinterpreted unless we care about it ourselves. And it is strong if the uh, type system is uh, protecting us from misinterpretations. The basic uh, example would be in C. Here we are uh, setting two uh, signed integers, two different values. The first one we are uh, putting to print f, but we are using incorrect uh, uh, forma uh, formatting clause and we get a value that is completely different and uh, doesn't mean anything for our user. Here we are making, uh, we are passing the value by, uh, by a pointer. We uh, then cast the pointer to a pointer to a different type and it all nicely uh, compiles, but we also get a value that doesn't make uh, any sense for us because this uh, 
value that is uh, ordinary int gets uh, interpreted as a short int, actually some bytes of this value. We may think that this is something that wouldn't happen in uh, higher level languages, but I will show how this can happen very similar thing can happen in SQL. So this is not completely relevant for us. Then we have static versus dynamic, which I believe all of the Pythonistas are familiar with. Of course, Python is a, a dynamic language because the types are determined during runtime, not uh, during compile time. So if we have a Python function without any annotations, we basically don't know what are the types of these arguments. We can pass various uh, very different types here and uh, they would all work. And even if we put something that doesn't work, we wouldn't know about this before we actually run this. So this is the thing about dynamic uh, typing. And uh, an example of static typing is uh, in Golang, where we can actually always uh, determine what type any variable has, either because like here it is marked or because it is assigned to some value of a known type to a literal or to a result of some function. And we know the result of the function here. So it, static typing doesn't mean that everything is marked, but it means that everything we can determine just by looking at the code and then uh, our compiler can determine it. We have also another distinction that is sometimes called weak uh, strong, but I would like to say it is strict versus loose. In strict typing, we have uh, explicit uh, type conversions. We have to uh, cast uh, values uh, explicitly. If we don't, we get uh, exceptions or compilation errors that uh, tell us that we have a type mismatch. In loose typing, there can be some uh, implicit uh, type conversion. And this uh, thing is actually not, uh, not a binary thing. This is uh, a spectrum. And uh, to show you, I can show you a language that is uh, stricter than Python. This is Haskell. And in Haskell, trying to do something like this, trying to print an integer would cause error. Trying to pass a, a list as a sole argument to if, it is also an error. So these are things that we are familiar with, uh, with uh, from Python. And we can't bring it uh, there because uh, Haskell uh, requires uh, some more discipline for us. On the other half, hand, there are languages that are looser than Python. Famously, it's uh, JavaScript. In JavaScript, almost every uh, expression we create would be interpreted somehow by uh, the interpreter. We can see, for example, that here, the number is cast to a string. Here it's uh, the object is cast to a number and so on. Somehow this uh, leads to strange things happening. For example, here we get not a number, but we are not working with numbers. And here uh, we get uh, the plus operator that uh, doesn't have this uh, commutative uh, property because uh, if we swap the operands, we get something uh, different. So this, uh, so Python is somewhere in the middle of the spectrum where we Pythonistas believe is uh, reasonable strictness of, uh, of the language. But of course, the idea of reasonable is uh, subjective. Then we have duck typing, something we are very, uh, very proud of that we have this uh, nice concept of duck typing. So in duck typing, protocols are implemented implicitly. We need to implement the required methods and the object becomes compatible with a protocol. We have this other way of uh, typing where classes must uh, inherit for another class or mark being marked as uh, implementing the protocol. 
uh, how do we call this? We could call this, this actually my idea platonic because uh, Plato was this guy who had this uh, concept of uh, metaphysical ideas and uh, he wouldn't agree with this proverb that if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Plato would say that there exists an idea of a duck and when we see a duck, we recognize it because our brains, our minds somehow know this uh, already this uh, idea of a duck. So it could be compared to classes. Or if we don't like this uh, whimsical ideas, we could uh, say it's structural typing and nominal typing. And these are the terms that are used in uh, MyPy uh, documentation. So they would probably be uh, somehow a part of this uh, Pythonic lingo. Uh, just a short digression, because before I, it was said interfaces, but it was crossed out and they said protocol. Uh, there is this uh, idea that uh, we Pythonistas tend to use a language that is a little different from uh, programmers in other languages. For example, we say race, where all the other languages say throw. We call arrays lists. When others say list, we say deck. If others say it's a blatant abuse of exceptions, we say stop by iteration. And also, uh, the thing that in most languages is called interfaces, we call it protocols. This is a little problem when we want to uh, communicate with others, but we have to remember that uh, this uh, name protocol means the same that uh, interface in Java or in Golang. Uh, there is this misconception also about uh, duck typing being uh, some special type of uh, dynamic typing. It is not true. Static languages can be also duck type. And uh, we can see an example here from Golang. We have this interface duck. We have a struct called malart. It implements these methods. And we can use an instance of malart as an argument for a function that requires a duck. Nowhere here we say explicitly a malart is a duck, but our compiler understands it. And there is also fifth criterion that we need to take into account. It's free versus fixed attributes because we are working with the uh, data structures and we also need to take this into account, although it is not actually a, a paradigm of typing. It's how uh, objects work internally. So if we look at our typical stack, we see that uh, the layers of the stack exhibit a different uh, way of uh, uh, typing. Uh, Python and JavaScript are not that uh, different here. Uh, of course, JavaScript is much looser than uh, Python, which I showed before. But for uh, SQL, it is completely different. We have uh, loose typing, we have uh, static, we have fixed attributes because we have, of course, the uh, tables that have uh, fixed uh, columns. We don't have any idea of uh, interfaces. So uh, if we communicate uh, from Python to SQL, we get this inherent incompatibility. But this incompatibility was uh, bridged long time ago with various ORMs. ORMs are actually a little unpythonic because they use fixed attributes, something which was not uh, uh, not a part of uh, classic Pythonic uh, way of uh, writing code. Uh, they don't use any interfaces. If you want to put something uh, as a related object, you have, of course, to put uh, the right class. You can't just uh, implement, re implement uh, a model uh, by implementing the same methods. But uh, this uh, bridges the gap between Python and between, S between SQL, and it also fixes some problems we have with in SQL. If we look at uh, this uh, operation, we can see why I uh, declare SQL a weekly type language. Here we are taking an ID of a publisher and set it as an author ID of some book. This uh, operation is correct 
but it doesn't make any sense. And the result of this uh, operation is actually undefined because uh, we don't know what would happen. It depends if uh, there happens to be an uh, author in our database that has the same ID as our publisher. Then it would, we would get a value that doesn't make any sense. If not, we would get an error. So this is something similar to what we get in C. Sometimes we get gibberish and sometimes we get uh, segmentation fault, but uh, we don't, we can't really say in some situations what we would get. This is actually bridged by ORM because this operation would always uh, raise uh, value error. So ORM would uh, make sure we aren't doing something uh, very stupid and this is one of the benefits of RM, but this is something that we have uh, for years now. And how about annotations? So let's enter MyPy into our stack. So MyPy is uh, a strange thing because it uses uh, static analysis of a dynamic code. And it is, uh, somehow disturbing for many people. And some people say that uh, it's unpythonic. Although actually MyPy can give us uh, some, uh, uh, some benefits. So now let's, uh, let's look how Django and MyPy can work together. Uh, how uh, do they have, uh, uh, do they, uh, work uh, together correctly or uh, are they lacking something? So now let us uh, look at uh, some uh, example models. Uh, and uh, here we have a book. This book is linked to a publisher and to the author. We allow uh, author to be null we don't allow publisher to be null because uh, sometimes we cannot label a book with the author. And if we now uh, look at uh, uh, some uh, functions, these functions uh, all, almost all have some problems. And if we run uh, MyPy on this code, it would actually uh, catch some of these problems. It would catch that we are using uh, incorrect type for our decimal field. Okay, it would catch that we are using um, uh, publisher none, but not that author none. Okay, it would also catch the thing that I was mentioning before, when we are trying to put the value that is uh, not pointed by this foreign key. It's also okay. However, these two things are also not okay, but they are not caught here. We are creating a book that has only a price. This would cause an uh, error because we are setting null values where to non null uh, columns. And this actually could be fixed, and maybe it would be fixed in the Django stubs in the future. But here we have the same problem, and this can't be fixed because uh, that's not how MyPy works. MyPy is uh, going line by line. And in order to know that this is wrong, we have to analyze the whole, uh, the whole code uh, as a whole. So it, uh, it wouldn't work uh, anyway. So what uh, about MyPy? It already recognizes the relationship between column types and Python types. It recognizes the nullability of fields. However, it can't handle some problems when we make incomplete objects. And it also requires a MyPy plugin. That's why it's not uh, uh, universal. Uh, this would only work with MyPy, not with any tool that uses uh, type annotations. So this is uh, also problematic. Okay, now let's look at the other side of our stack at uh, the communication between backend and frontend. I said that uh, JavaScript is not very different from Python with regards to uh, the typing paradigm. However, we also need to consider JSON. 
and JSON has almost no typing. It has only primitive types and no information about uh, classes or something like this. So in order to introduce uh, some more type safety, we need to add additional tools. So we would use OpenAPI 3 and we would uh, substitute uh, JavaScript with TypeScript. Uh, TypeScript is something that a JavaScript developer can learn in several hours because it's just JavaScript with type annotations, just like uh, type annotations in Python can be also learned by a Python dev. So, uh, and OpenAPI 3 is a, a system of schemas that can be used for tests and they can be also used for code generation. So now let's look at the other part of, uh, of this. So we created here a simple, uh, simple uh, React uh, component. And this React component simply displays the data of a book. Uh, however, the fetching of the data is uh, a little more complicated because it uses uh, several uh, API endpoints and combines this data. And it has to handle the situation where the author of the book is null and not call it, uh, not call this endpoint uh, without, uh, without a reason. And if we now, uh, now run this, we would see that it is working uh, just like we, just like we wanted. It would uh, call the uh, backend and it would display all this data. However, what if we have an, a developer that is uh, careless? What if we have a developer that gets this information? You need to, uh, you need to allow for null publishers. So this guy goes to uh, models and uh, he does the simplest things on earth. So he just allows it to be null. And uh, if we don't uh, introduce any type safety mechanisms, then it would probably call, uh, cause some bugs that uh, would happen in various places uh, because not all of our code can handle uh, the null value. However, here we would uh, have to do one more thing. This would be done by this uh, guy who does it or by CI. And this would be two things. Uh, first of all, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, it would be uh, using this tool to generate a schema. It is called Spectacular. There is a Jang uh, also a schema generator in Django REST framework, but it is not uh, as good as Spectacular. And we would generate a schema uh, YAME file. Then we would go to the front end. This is all things that can be automated. And we would generate some more files that would be TypeScript files. And uh, we can see that uh, all the types are generated here. And now, if we, if we try to, uh, to run our code, we would see that uh, during the compilation time, doing compilation from TypeScript to JavaScript, we already get an error because uh, here, uh, TypeScript detects that the uh, ID of a book publisher needs to be a number, but, but, but book publisher can be undefined or null. So we get what we wanted. We get a situation where uh, the CI uh, detects our error and the developer can now see that he broke the contract and he needs to handle this null value. So what are our takeaways from uh, this demo? There are tools for code safety enforcement that we can use in a whole Python stack and they are worth consideration and they are, uh, and the benefits I believe from them for any big uh, project outweigh the costs of uh, introducing them. However, they are of course not perfect. We can't expect them to catch all the uh, 
typing errors. And we probably, due to, due to this uh, inherently dynamic uh, character of Python, we would probably never be able to, to do this. However, we can do a lot with that. What can we see in the future? I believe that uh, one thing we need to expect or maybe work on is uh, more patterns uh, in type annotations that are available without plugins. So we can uh, actually make type annotations that would uh, work in every system, not only in MyPy. And the other thing is uh, tools that are based on code annotations, not on descriptions. Uh, this is uh, so they work like data classes. Uh, there are two projects like this. It's Strawberry GraphQL. We will have a sprint of Strawberry GraphQL uh, on this conference and Data Class DB. And they also try all try to do the same thing that Django RS framework or, uh, or Graphene or ORM, but in a different way. So thank you. I see that uh, we don't have uh, that much uh, time left. So I believe I would uh, have to answer to any questions in the breakout room. Is it correct? Yeah, that's correct. Thank you very much for your talk. Um, at the moment, you're still in the um, Brian track chat, but anybody who has a question for you can then move to talk full stack uh, type safety, uh, where you then can answer more complicated questions uh, if, everybody, if anybody is not totally stumped by this by now. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to show us all this. Oops, and um, that was not a proper law, so we'll try this again.